Awesome. Hello, everyone. Hopefully, you guys are making it back from lunch. Um, my name is Elena, and today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of privacy in Web3. Um, so before we get into Web3, I'm actually going to talk about Web2 for a tiny bit. So what do we do in Web2? Well, we have gaming. We have social media. Um, we use services like Uber and Airbnb and DoorDash. Um, we have apps in our phones, like the Weather app. Um, and obviously, we use it for payments and, and many more other things. And when Web2 breaks its promise on privacy, there are catastrophic consequences. Um, in gaming, for instance, uh, 40 million Americans have experienced doxing. Doxing is when your personal information is basically out there on the internet for malicious reasons. Um, and a lot of those cases actually come from disgruntled gamers being angry at one another. Um, there's also something called swatting, which basically uh, entails you um, getting someone's location from their IP address and then sending a prank call to the SWAT team uh, to go to their house. Um, and a, gr a pretty egregious example of this is actually Gamergate, if you remember that, when gamers were actually being uh, really egregiously harassed um, using these techniques. Um, Cambridge Analytica is another great example, or terrible example, say, where people's privacy was breached and potentially led to a different result in the US elections. Um, and Estrava, if you're familiar with that, it's a uh, fitness tracking app that uh, runners use all the time. Um, when soldiers actually use Strava, they accidentally gave away locations of secret US Army bases. Um, but but uh, when we have data breaches, it doesn't always come from hacks. Sometimes it comes from the company itself. So in the early days of Uber, for example, employees would literally use a party trick to show all their users' real-time location. Um, uh, there's, something, there's something called Kiwi Farms, which um, is a pretty terrible website that, again, doxes um, people they don't like online. Um, and one transgender activist actually had to leave the country because her location was leaked via an Uber hack. Um, so many times we have brand Oops, um, on, our, on our phones that leak location, or actually the request location to, uh, from your phone, and then they directly sell that data to data brokers. Um, SafeGraph is actually a company that buys that data, aggregates it, um, and is able to, to sell basically different types of information. So for instance, you could actually buy data from all the visitors of Planned Parenthood and where they went afterwards, presumably to their homes, for just $160. Um, for payments, Equifax hack, if you remember that, um, it was one of the largest data breaches for identity theft. Um, 140 million Americans lost their data for their name, social, uh, uh, social uh, security addresses, um, and so on. Um, Venmo is actually a popular payments app, and the, Cosmo the Cosmopolitan literally recommends on their website for using it to stalk your ex, which I think is just hilarious. Um, so now I'm going to talk about Web3. How is Web3 different? How is it better in terms of privacy? Well, it's not. <laughs> Everything is transparent by default. Um, and I do want to re remind you that pseudonymity does not equal privacy. In fact, if we're Web3, by design, we ask our users to de-anonymize themselves all the time. <laughs> so for instance, a lot of times people would use their first name, last name, .eth as their ENS domain. Um, people would put their NFT profile pictures that are associated with their main wallet sometimes. Anytime you want to request money from another crypto user, you're literally asking them to de-anonymize themselves by linking their actual identity to their Web3 wallet. And if we want Web3 to overtake Web2, it cannot be done without privacy. Um, in Web2, when we have a breach of privacy, it would lead to terrible consequences. And in Web3, we are just giving it away. Um, so how is the lack of privacy bad in Web3? Well, it does lead to targeted scams. So for instance, have you ever heard of a scam where someone lost their board ape or another really precious NFT? A lot of times, it would come from really targeted attacks where they where the attacker would know exactly what's in their wallet uh, and then approach that person um, and basically have a scan that's targeted exactly towards them based on that information. Um, we're basically revealing all of our citizens' information, financial data um, that relates to crypto to all nation states. So for instance, you know, privacy uh, is sometimes criticized as being 
you know, uh, an, important, um, an important aspect in national security. Um, and in fact, it is, because we're literally revealing all of our financial data to everyone. Um, and of course, MAV, which uh, Vitalik and Zuko just talked about, where privacy leads directly to some uh, players having a disproportional advantage based on that knowledge. User, users come to your product when your product is unequivocally better. Um, and users typically don't like it when you take features away. Um, so there are ways, uh, there are reasons why Web3 is better than Web2. Web3 Web has decentralization, it has programmability, it has censorship resistance, it gives individuals control over their data and funds. But you can't quite have censorship resistance without privacy. And honestly, you can't really say we're giving uh, control to individuals um, without privacy. Um, and there are ways where Web3 is definitely worse than Web2. Um, lack of privacy leads to worse games, in my opinion. Um, and then the, the fact that Web2 has better privacy uh, leads to way better user experience in terms of safety. So I kind of ask that we uh, don't focus on Web3, but more Web3++, which is how do we build Web3, but with privacy um, from the ground up and at the base layer? Um, because it's really, really hard to kind of bake privacy on top of a transparent layer. And that's kind of where Ironfish comes in. So this is the project that I'm currently working on. Um, and what is Ironfish? Ironfish is a proof of work layer one. Um, it only has private transactions using zero knowledge proofs. Um, we're currently working on multi-asset support uh, as well as bridge support. And later on, we want to add programmability on the layer two uh, level. Right now, we're actually running our phase two of our incentivized te test net. Um, and since May, we've had 24,000 participants. And at peak, we had 11,000 concurrent nodes. Um, right now, there's roughly 6,000 concurrent nodes in our test net. Um, everything that I'm sharing with you is totally out in the open. You can check these stats out for yourself. Um, and we have roughly 20 million uh, zero knowledge proof transactions since May, which I can actually confidently say we process more zero knowledge proof transactions on our test net than any other chain basically combined. Um, and I'm really, really proud of these numbers, and I'm really proud of the team as well, um, because in comparison, Bitcoin has roughly 15,000 nodes concurrently. Um, and our test net got to 11,000, which is quite amazing. Um, Part of, the, part of the reason is because we aim to make it extremely easy for anyone to run a node. For us, it's really important that when we build this tech, um, that people can actually run it. <laughs> and traditionally, running a full node has been extremely painful. Um, so for us, we really, really focus on making it extremely easy for anyone to run a full node. In fact, you can install Ironfish right now in your computer with just a one-line command. Um, and then we also have other ways of installing Ironfish as well. So phase three of our testing is actually coming soon with emphasis on testing our multi-asset and bridge support. Um, and today I kind of want to announce that we are going to be planning mainnet in Q2 um, of next year. Um, and so I'll kind of conclude it with that. Um, if you want to learn more about the project, um, my Twitter handle name is Lean the Bean, and the project handle name is Ironfish Crypto. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs>